Appreciate that. <clears throat> yeah, man. You know, I wanted to put. You know, I was doing the typical all at home all day. I mean, from the waist down, it's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm right there with you. I, I had to put on, I had to change my shirt. You know, I get the one with all the crumbs off and get in here and make my hair look a little better. No doubt, so we're doing all right. No well, doubt. all right. Let's let's get our clicking and clicking and clacking going on. Yep, we are live, live and direct. Boom, boom, boom. Show to the nuff. <laughs> I, you know, I think, uh, <laughs> I think is, you know, people almost dress like, uh, like, uh, like you got a clothes mullet these days. You got a, you got a <laughs> business up top and a party, right. party down below. That's I right. Think, I think that's how it is, man. I think, I think that's pretty much common for most people these days. I like um, how you put that, that business mullet. Yeah, it's, you know, everybody got pajamas or shorts or whatever else on the bottom is in the, you know, saying and the. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, I'm I'm sporting yeah, one of those here today, man. I'm like, shoot, I had to run upstairs, throw me on a little, uh, uh, at least a halfway decent shirt, not one with the, you know, the commercial with the the, the dude's neck collar that was, you know, that was all raggedy, and she's like, uh, oh, very relaxed, one or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had one of them on, and I was like, ah, I can't represent like that, man. Can't represent like that if one here. So yeah, I had to go put on like a little shirt action, man, and right all that kind of stuff, man. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, Dominique. So we're just chitting and chatting and doing our usual um, slow start, slow build. We did have a guest. She is in Argentina, and we may have uh, had our wires crossed, so it may just be the two of us. So you'll have to deal with just the two of us as usual. Hey, Dominique. We got okay. we, we to get Dominique on here one of these days. Oh, man. yeah. You know, we got we to gotta get her on here and, and uh, get her hey. opinion on some stuff. Hey Dominique, what you doing right now? Just in the <laughs> for real. Hey Dominique, yeah, you you got some clothes on. You got your hair done. You, <laughs> you want to jump on? You want to jump on with the Mad Men? You know what I'm saying? You, Don't scare uh, her off. She's gonna change. She's not. She no way. She wouldn't run. Oh, she wouldn't look. She thumbs up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Maybe we got. Maybe we got a guest after all, man. Maybe, maybe we'll do the. Maybe we'll do the. Maybe we'll get we'll Dominique the impromptu on here. guest. Maybe we'll get Dominique on here. We'll get her. We'll get her thoughts. Get some ideas. Oh, I pro I would not present well in the show right now. <laughs> oh, girl, please, child, please, you can get on here and do your thing. You know what I'm saying? You 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 got it natural. But uh, <laughs> uh oh, she says now she can't hear. I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh oh. Oh, all of a sudden she can't hear when we ask her to come on and all that now. Yes, I'm sorry, I can't. Yeah, she's got all that going on once we once we kind of bring up her coming on board here. Well, I sent her a link if she gets brave, she's on. So anyway, while we're chitting and chatting and doing our hey, hey, thing. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm Kirk M. Samuels. That's right, and I'm Jason B. Kendrick. And we are the mad men of masculinity, baby. That's right. We're just real men having real conversations for you. And today, you like we had a guest. You like the way I did the for you. Yeah, the for you. Yeah, I knew you were gonna do the for you. I'm, I'm glad you didn't do the too legit because you know yeah. that's a little old. Too legit to quit. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So we, we did have, as you all saw, we did have Don Bay scheduled. She is in Argentina, so we may have gotten our uh, messaging and schedules crossed. So she will be on. But that doesn't mean we don't have anything to talk about because you know it's us. We always have something to talk. We about. We always got something to talk about, man. Something we always got some good deep. Deep dive stuff to talk about, man. We can get on here and talk about almost anything, man. Oh yeah, but yeah, like uh, we were talking about before we got on, discussing what else to talk about. I can't. I was talking with a friend, new friend last night, who's in the finance and insurance uh, business, and we were talking about uh, possible uh, collaborations. And what really came up was how she can uh, give people all the tools they need, and they'll do good for two to three months, and then all of a sudden they fall off. And I was like, oh yeah, it's because they're internal story their dialogue doesn't match and so we wanted to talk about that and now Dam dominique's brave enough she wants to jump on now uh oh so, give me is a sec let's see let's see if we'll throw she? dominique on what oh Lord. you know what i did not realize that i was clicking on a link you know what actually made me pop up on your show i have 
no makeup on, greasy hair. I just got back from doing cryotherapy and like this really cool cryofacial. It's supposed to make me like three decades younger. Oh, it worked. You like your 14. Oh yeah. That's so awesome. funny. You didn't, you know, see what happens, see what happens when you when you dabble when you dabble with the madmen. We yeah. you know, we don't mess around, you know. The, we we don't mess around here on the mad men and masculinity. Man, no kidding. It's like I'm like I so, suddenly I couldn't hear you once I responded to you. Mm. you know, via text or messenger yeah. and so i don't know if it did something to mute my mic or like what by doing that and then I bam know. i get this link from you and like <laughs> boom it's like johnny on the spot over there. we don't we don't play <laughs> we don't play we we could other mitchy school because they got recess we don't play, <laughs> we don't oh, play. that's recess. one thing that's one thing we don't do is play we do not play around hey the good news is we don't have makeup on either so no. oh we're, we're, that makes good. me feel a lot no, better. this my, my hair is not looking good it's all it's all Pushed up on the side yeah. from where I fell asleep oh, after my. God. Have we yeah. not gotten very self conscious all of a sudden? I'm yeah, telling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Look, we, see what you started, yeah. Dominique? What you started? I just I hope I have her. clothes on right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't from the waist down. I, um, I, I got nothing on from the waist down. Hey, so 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 check this out. So I mean, who are you? I mean, I mean, not we know who we know who you are, but you know, but but introduce yourself to the Mad Men world, the Mad Men universe. Well, and I, I'm I'm very curious about this madman. I just happened to go on Facebook because I was going to check, you know, and return the message for an appointment I have, and and then I saw that you guys were live, and so I'm like, what's this madman? And with Kirk Samuels, like, what's up with that? I I don't know that I've heard this new name. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's a show or whatnot. You can catch me up later, but so I just clicked on it, and then made a text, and then suddenly I'm appearing on the show, makeup list. <laughs> nice. List. Actually, so, so we got so much. Janine says so she's listening while she's hey. driving, driving hey. home. But what? So, 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 yeah, I mean, this is, this is our format to talk. I mean, we're two guys. We're mad, not mad, crazy. We're mad, like, passionate about masculinity and about all things from oh from a, from a guy perspective. So sorry you had me. No, oh, no, 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 no. You're we, actually we our demographic. You. Yeah, we know you. We know yeah. you. And see, a lot of times, <laughs> see, here's the deal. So a lot of times, our audience tends to be women because we present things that 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 are that have to do with kind of both sides of that equation, but from a from a uh, from a, a man point of view. So so no, you're it. You're, this is no accident, by the way. This is yeah, not no. an accident. This was meant to happen. Our, our demographic, our viewers. That, right? No, our demographic, our viewers, Dominique, are women 35 to 55. That's 60 to 7 percent. Oh, they're my peeps. Those are my so, people. You're 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 right there, and and yeah, we do. We we discuss both masculine and feminine dynamics, mm -hmm. nice guy syndrome, superwoman syndrome, and we were gonna have Don Bates on um, mm -hmm. to talk about the need for for the masculine and the raising of their boys today. And then since she's in Argentina and we we cross we we uh, cross wires there, uh, we'll get her on later. But I was talking about the internal stories that we all have and wanted to talk about that. So because last night I had a business call. Uh, networking call with a friend of mine who does financial planning and insurance and she was talking about how she can give people all these like great plans and all these tools and they do good for two to three months and also they start falling off and my first thought was like well of course yeah their internal programming doesn't jive with the new thing mm -hmm. that they're doing the internal story right well and those neural pathways right that's like that's something that comes with habit from doing over open you know over and over again mm -hmm. to form a new habit and we all know that that takes time yeah right so it's, yeah, it so, takes time and support. Support. support and here's why i don't think this is by accident because a lot of times we talk a lot about things having to do with relationships again the masculine feminine dynamic and all that kind of stuff and you happen to have some insight you know, uh, I mean, I passion it. in that area. I am so fascinated by it. It's like, how in the hell, oh, excuse me, to use hell and God in the same sentence, I apologize. That was not my intent. But how, Ding and in. how are we even meant to coexist like in a, in a romantic relationship when we deviated from the economic enterprise that used to be what marriage is about to now, where it's like this romantic relationship and it's based on so many different truly unpractical things, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that that is just so fascinating to me to learn all about mm -hmm. that because we are wired so completely mm -hmm. different and it only mattered when all of this stuff started changing, you know, when marriage mm -hmm. started going more towards, you know, that out of romantic love and not for practicality and I know mm -hmm. whose kids are mine and who to leave mm -hmm. my crap to someday when I die. Mm -hmm. um, 
to now where it's just mostly about love and finding one person to fulfill all your needs like jerry mcguire you know yeah. you complete me right right <laughs> it was and, romantic at the time i love it, that movie but this yeah. is how this is how i think this is how i think this is relevant because uh, exactly what you're talking about jbk a lot of times we tell ourselves these stories we have these stories and, and some of these stories relate to us in the context of relationship we bring a lot of these narratives into relationship with you know with someone and a lot of what i think we live out and oh by the way we are free to agree to disagree on here so we we love the differing in opinions and perspectives dominique by the way so i mean we bring these narratives i think into relationship and then quite often we end up living out with whatever that story is that we think we bring into it as opposed to you know coming in relatively fresh and just experiencing it for what it is basically the baggage that we bring in yeah yeah which is so much different you know again in line with what i was saying than it used to be now right so it's just it's 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 just it's confusing it's confusing and i think it's mm -hmm. causing a lot of um just assumptions and miscommunication and, mm -hmm. and that type yeah. of thing with couples <clears throat> Yeah, so it's really a multifaceted issue that has a lot of things that we that that we do actually talk about. And that was one reason I'm like, OK, I bet this is this is divine intervention. This is why Dominique's here with us today, because there's going to be <laughs> something that you either have input to put on or to uh, to contribute. So now give give folks a little bit of background as to how you've had experience in the world of I mean, uh, maybe somewhat, maybe some personal, but some professional, some other outside ventures in terms of relationship and in and and all. I mean, where where is your perspective being informed from tonight? Well, so we have like about eight hours, right? Uh, <laughs> sometimes we get going. Yeah, sometimes we. I am we never drag, lost for words, but uh, no. So I am a divorce recovery expert and a divorce coach and consultant. So I mainly work with women. And um, in my position, what my goal is, is to offer that unbiased support um, that is going to help a woman make some very critical decisions that are going to affect the rest of her life and her children's you know, life um, if those decisions are not made from a business brain during the process of divorce as opposed to an emotional brain. So as a coach, I'm there to let them vent because I don't charge 450 an hour like a lot of these um, you know, family law attorneys do and they're not trained, nor do they want to deal with the emotional stuff of this, quite frankly. Um, and so I'm there emotionally, but I'm very real and direct. And I tell them, you know, at the, this is like a one-time thing. There are no like do-overs, you know, you don't get a mulligan in divorce. Um, so, um, you know, and then I help prepare them for their attorney. So by the, by the time they've um, reached out to an attorney, they know what their parenting plan is going to look like. Um, they know what their biggest wins would be in a divorce situation. So they're already coming to the negotiation table uh, super prepared, right? And so mm -hmm. at that point, the billable hours start to go down from their attorney and, mm -hmm. um, and, and hopefully, ideally, they don't have as many regrets or any, preferably, Mm -hmm. um, years down the road when all is said mm -hmm. and done. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of women um, are guilty of leaving money on the table because, and I was one of those women simply because I felt guilty for initiating the divorce and for what it was doing for my family because I no longer felt I could stay in it. Mm -hmm. And I had nothing at the time. Um, and then things changed dramatically, but not in my favor just a couple of years later. So, you know, I guess to answer that second part of your question, I've been married and divorced twice. I call myself a two-time divorce survivor um, and thriver. Um, I'm currently single and I've never been, I mean, I've been happy, you know, I've been as happy in my life for sure, but I'm in a, in a good place. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would like to do is that it not only show the example, but my own experience, but help other women know that they can too get through it regardless of what they have. Um, mm -hmm. But that strategy is very, very important in the process um, as are so many different things. And if they could just figure out that I exist before they reach out to any divorce professional, mm -hmm. I could, you know, save them a lot of brain damage mm -hmm. and money. Right. So in the context of the, of that story, we tell ourselves um, when you're even in, in an, adverse period of time. I too have been there. I got that same story as you in terms of, yeah. uh, I, I'm, I, I don't say multiple survivor. I say multiple uh, offender. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it, the story I, I had to, I had to accept the fact that, um, 
And this is what I think a lot of people even miss going through something like divorce is that I had a part in this. I had a part in, I mean, it, it's, it's never always, I don't want to say never, never say never, but rarely is it always the other person's whatever. If nothing else, if nothing else, somebody can look in the mirror and say, okay, I'm a bad picker. I picked that person. I, I, right. I married that person. And so in terms of the story yeah. we tell ourselves, I mean, I think that's a prime example of how we can go into something with a narrative that can inform how we act within that thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's actually, I mean, part of the reasons I do the work that I do now is because of that almost, I didn't have where I actually went into the marriage, but after my last relationship, I had, you know, about a five year span of these three living girlfriends and, and these relationships. And after the last one, I was like, okay, stop. I'm the common denominator in this mess. Mm -hmm. So it's time for me to work on myself and really begin to un start to unravel this story and things and really get down to the root of a lot of these internal dialogues and programming that's really running a lot of the unhealthy behaviors and things, the 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 shutting down and the the fight and flight and those different things. And it's still an ongoing process. I'm much more aware, however, understanding those underlying stories in so many different ways. And I think not only are we having to deal with the multifaceted nature of what it means to be man, what it means to be a woman nowadays in relationship, but yeah. then we also have to deal with our own personal things. And then I find that the, deep, the, the depths of intimacy really do come from having that journey together, although you have to be willing to have that journey together. And sometimes right. that's, I'm finding with some of my coaching clients now that there's less of a willingness from one part or the other because they don't want to dig or they, they don't think there's anything wrong. So in, in your experience, what has been some of the, the, if you had two or three tidbits to really share with ladies who are either considering divorce or going down that way, or maybe something that might save them from that going that direction? You know, and it's, it's funny because like I joked earlier, it's like I am never at a loss for words. Like I, I can't write a paragraph that's not 10. <laughs> so it, my, the best way that I could answer that question, I think, is I believe that the solution to really almost anything in life, okay, including um, going through a divorce or, you know, being single and or getting being frustrated in the dating process um, is build a full life. You know, and it's something that you need to have um, for yourself, but also while you're in that relationship, you can't let that go. And I think as soon as we stop contributing to those different wheels of life, so as a lot of people know it, you know, your spirituality, you know, your financial health, your friends and family, career, goals, spiritualness, you know, all that stuff. It's like if we're not constantly contributing and there's no, I mean, Tony Robbins can't even get it 100%, right? There's no such thing as... 100% balance. But if we make a conscientious effort to make sure that we are contributing to all of those things in our life on a consistent basis, we're not going to rely on so much from one person to provide all those needs, which we tend to do when we get into relationships. Um, you know, it's like our partners become our, our BFF, our counselor, our um, sexual conquest, um, you know, so many different things. And it's, it's not fair to put that on one person, you know, to, to wrap up your whole life into one person. It's codependent mm -hmm. uh, and it's just really toxic. Mm. So build a full life, you know, and by building a full life, whether you're recovering from a breakup or not, it's still the same. It's got the same outcome, right? Um, whether you're trying to get back into a relationship because you feel like your ex and I were meant to be together, right? So you're going to take some time out and improve yourself, really work on yourself because you know that you did some things to, you know, destroy that relationship. Um, well, then, you know, you've got in doing that anyway, you're doing it for you. You're becoming this person. You're having these experiences. You know, you're finding more self-acceptance and comfort in the quiet that is so different from being in a relationship um, that either way you feel like you win, mm. you know, <clears throat> more important than that is when you are at that place and we'll call it aligned. Okay. I'm going to use a spiritual word here aligns. Um, you attract in who you are at that time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that, that for me is why I stress so much. Like, it, it sounds like you both did that. Like after a, a very serious relationship, you took that time out for reflection where a lot of men and men are 
oftentimes more guilty than women, but I know a few people on here that might accuse me or challenge me on that. So I'm not going to say it for fact. Um, but, um, oh God, squirrel. Where was I going mm. with that? <clears throat> oh, the other side is, um, you know, even if you, those are the same things that attracted your partner to you in the first mm -hmm. place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when we distance ourselves from that, at first it's great for both parties, but then things start to get dull and into a pattern. There's that mm -hmm. excitement there, whatever. So by mm -hmm. building a full life, you're just um, either way, you know, you're going to be okay. And mm -hmm. you're going to also attract somebody that has a full life, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody that you aspire to be is probably somebody that you aspire to be with. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, th I think you, you got to do the, you got to do the mirror work. You got to do the work in the mirror uh, first and foremost. And that's, you know, loving who you see and recognizing that what you see is a work in progress. Um, but that mirror work is hard because you can't lie to the one in the mirror. Like you can't put up a front. You can't just talk your way out of it. And, you know, and that that work is difficult. I, I think commonly we would rather do the work in the window where we can see through and see the other side and point to them and all that kind of stuff than do the work in the mirror. Well, but the work in the mirror, good. the work in the mirror is the is the is the tough part, but it's the essential part. Otherwise, yep. you're just gonna take whatever it is that you had into whatever it is that you're trying to get uh, or or that you're getting. And you're going to get ultimately the same result, the same net net, you know, in the end, because you never let go of all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I had to I've you know, I've gotten good from a man to a woman perspective in terms of a dating thing when I can see that that she's looking at me, but she's thinking about the X or the him or she's projecting stuff into uh, you know, I got it. I'm, I'm pulling the ripcord, you know, I'm, 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 I'm out of here. You know, I mean, I just, I ain't got time for all that. And, and I, you know, I think commonly that's what we do though. We, we project and we bring all that into, into some, you know, something that, that we're, that we're going into. And then we end up, why am I experiencing the same thing over and over again? Like, like JBK said, cause I'm the common denominator and I keep bringing that same junk um, every time I, every time I, uh, every time I change, change the scene. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to bring up the whole idea of the, our internal story and those patterns, because those things that we project are the things that we need to be looking in the mirror and need to be looking at. And it is actually easier and quicker and better to heal those things in a relationship if you're both on the same page and working together. And so mm -hmm. doing that inner work of looking at going, okay, well, here's been my results. And one of my favorite and most hated sayings is results, sometimes harsh, but always fair. Like, what are your results? What are you getting? If you look at those results, you realize, okay, well, this is going to lead me back breadcrumbs back down the path to my story. And if I know my story and I'm with somebody, I need to let them know their my story as well. So they can stop taking all these things that I project on them personally, and mm -hmm. then vice versa. And so mm -hmm. it's a matter of doing the mirror work and sharing that. Because we can do the mirror work one on one, and you will get the work done, and you will learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. However, if you're in relationship, it's really about doing the work together. And I've seen a lot of folks. You see where the one partner or the other decides it's time to work on themselves, or they're tired of the same old, same old, and they start doing the work, and it ends up being the death knell for the relationship because the other partner doesn't want to do the work and doesn't mm -hmm. think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's that's a beautiful setting for intimacy when you when I can bring my my uh my my to a degree when i can bring the honesty of who i am into a setting where we can now you know we can now be part of the 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 garden or the the healing environment for that not that i'm bringing my stuff to somebody else to fix but you know the perfect laboratory the perfect uh the perfect place to to have that a lot of that healing happen is in the context of a healthy transparent vulnerable intimate you know, relationship with somebody else that I, I recognize that I have uh, faults. I have things that in areas where I fall short and I'm, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm comfortable enough to bring that to somebody else. And, and, and we work on ours together. The tough part is when, when one person or both people, to your point, a, somebody's not doing the work or B, somebody is not recognizing the fact that, yeah, I got some junk in my trunk. You know, I got some issues. Uh, I got more issues than Kleenex got tissues, right? And so, you know, when 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 we don't when we can't even recognize that, then we can't even start off at the same place. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's always funny to me. And I mean, I've talked to probably every client I've had about it. It's funny how just because of for the for the comfort of our parents and things, and this is one of the things that Kirk and I really like to talk about to change. But just for the you know our upbringing, they're like, okay, don't date while you're in the house, or you only have this this freedom or this um, this amount of space where you can actually go out and, and interact with the opposite sex. And then mm-hmm. as soon as you're out of the house, you're in college, whatever. Like, all right, go find you a girl and have some grandkids for me. And and you're like, I I. I don't, I've never talked to a girl. I've never had a relationship or whatever. And so we take all these lack of awareness into these intimate relationships and wonder why we struggle so hard. And we keep on projecting. We don't study. We don't realize that men and women communicate differently, that we have different things. And if what I find every time I work with a couple, especially one that's been married for a while, within five minutes, they start laughing because they all, what I'm usually the woman will look at the guy and be like, that's why you do that. I always wonder why you do that thing. We just aren't aware. And so the education of men, men are more likely like this and women are more likely like this. And this is what's important to both sides and bringing that in. What what I find is and what seems to be the common denominator when those healthy relationships is that once you understand your partner, he's shared or she shared their traumas, their issues, you're aware of them. You no longer take their reactions or whatever personally. You can say, oh, I can see you're upset or triggered right now. How can I support you versus why are you doing this to me? Why are you being upset with me? And so it's part of that change in the story. And I find it's with that support of that special partner in that intimate relationship when you realize, oh, I can be myself. I can be vulnerable when I'm feeling this way and have them not take it personally is really the the, the highway to healing if, if there is one, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put you on the spot, Dominique. I'm going I'm, to I'm totally put you on the spot. Do you think that... that um, and obviously we're making huge generalities and, and just kind of speaking, you know, just kind of flat across the board and that kind of stuff. But, but, uh, but Dominique, do you think, I mean, cause we're, we're guys. So, you know, we're going to ask you to speak for every woman out there. No, no pressure. <laughs> I'm a no, unique bird. Yeah. Yeah. Take a sip of that wine. Um, <laughs> it is um, reserve troll. Nice. Right on. That is not wine. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, do you think that is is it difficult for women collectively generally to do that hard mirror work to to really look in the mirror and to self analyze and to say okay what what do I need to do different Well so to ask that question would be to ask me if I know what it's like for a man to experience that right mm-hmm. so I only know it from my from my that, that's, that's exactly what I mean yeah from from your perspective But I don't know I think it's deeper than just a gender thing I think, um, you know, there's so many different like psychological characteristics that could, you know, dramatically change that across the board. For example, you know, somebody that was narcissistic, right? Like they, they aren't wrong, you know, they aren't, they aren't wrong. And, you know, they're all, they're all about the charm. They'll never admit that they're wrong. Everything, you know, most things are about for show. I mean, there's just, some deep seated insecurities based on childhood, mother's relationships, father's relationships, whatever. So it's, it, it's just tough. It's like, for me personally, I'm one of those people that I'm just very curious. I study human behavior and that's part of why, you know, I'm drawn to what I do. Um, but it's just, I'm all about hearing constructive feedback that can help me grow. And unless it's delivered in a really unkind way mm-hmm. and unfair way, mm-hmm. um, I really don't get offended easy. Mm-hmm. I really, mm-hmm. really don't. I just, I try and soak it in. And um, so I think that, you know, it's, it's whether somebody's, maybe it's like, whether, what is it somebody that's hit a wall enough times to where they just can't go through that again. So they decide to open up the possibility, right. Mm. And entertain that. Hmm, maybe it's about me. Maybe it's not all of these men's fault, you know, that I'm where I'm at. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, a, you've got to have somebody that's willing to look inward that's, you know, mm-hmm. been kicked down enough to know that, OK, maybe we need to look at some things mm-hmm. um, or and then there's a narcissist that probably is never going to learn because they don't see that they're doing anything wrong. So, mm-hmm. well, and it's not even necessarily the narcissist. I mean, um, one thing that came up and it's one of the things I'm very aware of myself. There's a book out there by Carol Dweck, Mindset, which there's a yeah. fixed mindset and there's a growth mindset. And a lot of times that fixed mindset, it's about their talents, about their charm, it's about their intelligence. So it's not about actually doing work. So a lot of times I find those mindsets have a hard time looking in the mirror and going, oh, I need to work on myself because it's like, well, this is just me. I'm just stuck this way. 
Mm -hmm. you know, and, and changing that to more of a growth mindset to like, oh, I can become that person if I do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, and I just read that recently. I mean, there's two really distinct personality types, if, if that's what you want to call it, where one sees the brain and the thought process is more valuable than another who feels like it's fixed, mm -hmm. you know, and that those are two real mindsets. And it kind of blew me away to even hear that, like that somebody could think that they truly were not incapable of change could mm -hmm. exist. Mm. Right. My perception prior to giving that any thought was that no, everyone thinks the same way I do. Everyone mm -hmm. can change, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And, yeah. And, and so when, when we come across people that, um, well, I mean, this is, I guess, maybe shifting to it in an advice perspective from you two. Um, when we come across people who don't display the ability <laughs> uh, or the desire or the capacity to recognize those things, what do we do? Because like I said, my, my tendency is I have a very low tolerance for people in general like that. I mean, I, I won't even like say a whole lot. I just excuse myself from that situation. So, but maybe that's not, maybe that's not right. Maybe that's not the best thing for me to do. I don't know. But so, but when we come across people um, who are caught in the dogma of self and, 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 and that's who they are. They refuse to even stretch outside of that. What do we do? <laughs> Man, it's it's tough because, you know, it's like as we're all, and I don't want to make any assumptions, Jason, because I think I met you live once in person. And, um, you know, on the phone, I would guess that you were somewhere in your 30s. Don't let that go to your head. Or maybe it's offensive because <laughs> I honestly don't even know. Mm. But I think at this age, we've just experienced, you know, so much that it's like, you know, it's like the way a rock erodes. It's like what the water is rising, it, it continues over time to like eat away at the rock, right? And the rock changes shape. And I think the same, and that, I've never used that analogy before. I have no clue where that just came from. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that- You call me uh, old as a rock? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> She's calling you a fossil. Fossil. <laughs> I know, I'm taking grenades, man. <laughs> um. So, so I just think that like at this point in time, I mean, it, it's hard for me to answer that question because I don't even date right now. Like I'm two, almost two years out of a, uh, a relationship that I thought was the relationship that made up for all the other crappy ones. And it turned out that that just was not the case no. at all whatsoever. I and think so, I met that guy, didn't I? Uh, yes, you did. He actually uh, um, was nice enough to join me at your book signing event. Uh, and at the car place right it was, it was I, i'm just all in your business but was that the guy that was also at your office when we did the the live stream the Zoom oh, wait, thing? this is live right yeah this is live <laughs> i'm putting you on the no. spot i'm all in your business no okay. no we no um oh, yeah, we're blocked we're blocked <laughs> oh okay that's good <laughs> well you know there there is a healthy yeah. reason for that too by the way yeah um but yes it was it was him well, yeah. and then to even get back to that point of, you know, what do you do when you, when you realize those things is like, I mean, you got to take the first step, which is the acknowledgement, like, okay, this is who this person is. What did I do to attract it? What do I need to do to mm. either heal myself or whatnot? Mm. But I think I find a lot of times once that realization comes for a lot of folks, it's, it, you know, it's very scary because, okay, now I have this awareness and this acknowledgement, I cannot ignore it anymore. Yeah. So what does that mean? So does that mean this relationship's over? Does that mean we can work on it? And I think that's where the work really comes. But it, it, what I'm finding with everyone I work with, with it, in my own life and everyone we talk to, I mean, doing this and everything else, it, it's coming down to, and like even you said, Dominique, it's coming down to relationship with self. Can mm -hmm. we be happy with ourselves and be ourselves for everybody so that we can attract those people that resonate with us? Yeah. Right? You know, in my experience, it was all about people pleasing and being a nice guy and kissing butt and always being in the friend zone and, you know, just doing all the wrong things. And it's interesting. It's been almost seven years now. I didn't attend for it to last that long. It just has, yeah. but I've been basically for the, for the most part single for seven years. And it's getting to this point now where I'm almost like, huh, yeah. I could take it or leave it, you know? And it's, so it's really funny sometimes because there a lot of that fraud thing comes up that uh, Kirk and I've talked about before about, well, how can I help people with their relationships? Well, I'm not even in one myself, but, you know, what's the old saying, you know, coaches don't play. Right. Right. But I, I just, I definitely will be playing. I'm just in the process of finding it's just that whole process of who am I? What do I need? 
who am I bringing to this relationship? And am I going to be open enough and vulnerable enough to create that open, honest, intimate relationship with this next person? Mm-hmm. Or am I going to do the same old, same old? Well, and that's awesome because I, 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 I know it's more challenging for a man to admit things like that just because of, you know, the way you guys have been raised and masking your emotions and whatnot. So I, I love your transparency and sharing that. And I think it's just, you know, it's admirable because I know by the nature of the work I've done for myself and that I do for people, just how healing that is, you know, and that in order, in order to, you know, really truly be able to love somebody, you really have to learn to love yourself. We've all heard that a million times, but it was really only this last experience that I learned what that really even meant. You know, mm-hmm. before it was just like this cliche I heard all the time, mm-hmm. but now I know what it means, right? Because um, if I'm not capable of being the type of person I want to meet, I mean, mm-hmm. if I'm not in that league, as I used to say when I did matchmaking, right? Well, I can like him all day long, but that doesn't mean, you know, he's going to want to come play, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it just, uh, it just takes, you know, it's yeah. stumbling. We all have a story of what led us to where we're, where we're at today and why we do what we do. We yeah. all have a story. Everyone that does this work has a story. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the only difference is just really in um, having it happen enough times to where you're, you're willing to turn over that rock out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. And yeah. because you don't want to sa- settle for mediocrity anymore, yeah. you know. And, and it, it, you do have to love yourself. When I say love yourself, I'm not talking about the narcissism. I'm not talking about um, love of self. I'm talking about you know self love or taking care of yourself and honoring yourself and valuing yourself and and being truthful and honesty with your and honest with yourself and 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 I think that opens you up as much as anything else to attract somebody to love you that same way. Um, I think sometimes I found, at least in my life, I, I'll, I'll get real specific. I found that that quite often I ended up over the course, the span of my life, I've ended up with people who loved me the way I loved myself, which I didn't love myself very much. And so that was the love I experienced through other people. And again, that's a story that I just kind of carry forth uh, into myself. And then then, yeah, you, you do have the the male female dynamics, you know, the, the way we were raised and the way we were born and the way we were trained. But at the same time, nowadays, because of culture, I think you have the feminization of men and the masculinization of women. So, you know, so a lot of those things are upside down these, these days as well. Oh, that's a whole other show, Kirk. Mm-hmm. And that's something oh, I've yeah. been talking a lot about lately. Mm-hmm. That's what we spend most of our time talking about, actually, is not that syndrome, <laughs> superwoman syndrome. But yeah, I, I mean, getting out. Oh yeah, you gotta see. You, you now, now you know. You have to go back and watch all the episodes. Get now you're in the, now you're in the tribe. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, to get back to Kirk's point, I mean, the self love thing. This is one of the things I have struggled with for so long because of the stories in my head and everything. And what really helped me was to realize that love isn't this romanticized version of love that we've learned from all the romantic comedies and things love at its core is acceptance Mm -hmm. and it starts with us going okay who am i what is my story and accepting that instead of running from it because every one of my clients every person everyone my friends my family everybody i talk to nowadays i'm like i I want to go deep and get to their story because what i'm finding is the story leads to the self-love the story leads to the purpose the story leads to that fulfilling life because we want to heal that part of ourselves and that leads us to wanting to help other people and mm-hmm. I know in my story, I know in Kirk's story, I'm, I'm assuming in yours, Dominique, there's some truth to that where what we experienced led us to where we are now, whether it's in relationship, single, business, whatnot. It's that's when we own that story, accept that story, accept our experiences from childhood that may have been healthy or not, most likely not. Most of us didn't get out of childhood unscathed nowadays. That leads us to want to help others and to heal those wounds. And I think that's really where that self-love starts looking at that past looking at that story and going oh this is why i do these things this is what my trauma is and this is what i need to impart to my partner in the future so that we can learn and grow and heal and be vulnerable together because we understand each other versus yeah. creating that those stories right yeah and in doing it you know that way it's like you really are um safe to attract the per you know the perfect person for you because you're you know you're like you're a, you're you're a healthy person it's the best way to say it you know mm-hmm. mentally physically whatever you're just you're you're a healthy person with a healthy outlook on relationships um with a healthy amount of experience that got you there mm-hmm. um but that's god that is such a huge part of the foundation you know i think 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at uh, uh, Janine over here. She says, I'm finally figuring out my relation. How oh, I'm finally figuring out my relationships reflect how I love myself. Grateful I love me now. So ready to attract that beautiful energy. Uh, that is an energy. That is a light. You know, yeah. when you have a healthy love of yourself, that is a light that you bring into the room. And people want that. People, it's like yeah. a moth to a flame. People just want to be around people that have a healthy, balanced love for themselves. And they radiate that. And when you have that, you radiate that in the room. You, you, you know, you, you, you're like the thermostat. When you walk into the room, you, you warm it up or you cool it down, whatever it needs. But, but when you have that, that, that beautiful, radiant kind of love and you bring that story into the room, then man, people are like, yeah, I, I, I want, I want to be. And then it's just, then at that point, it's a matter of time. But not that you're waiting because you have that love for yourself. So yeah, it's not even that that, life. you don't, you don't need anybody to, to, to fulfill that, 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 that some hole or some void uh, per se. And so, and then you're bringing a more healthier version of yourself because you're not dependent or codependent or anything like that because you're bringing your wholeness. They're bringing their wholeness. And, uh, and then ideally you got two whole people, you know, coming together and, you know, and even, even your, your past hurts, you know, we talked about this before, even your past hurts are scars. They're not wounds. Mm -hmm. You're not bleeding on anybody. You can share your scars. I got a scar on my forehead. I got, you can, you can share the story behind that, but at the same time, I'm not bleeding on anybody while I'm, you know, while, while I'm with them. So that's, that's a beautiful thing when you can bring that energy into, into a room or into a circumstance or even into a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And going in it that way, it's like you've already got this automatic boundary set, right? You're not going to mm -hmm. let somebody that I don't want to say lesser than you. You that's not the term. But mm -hmm. you know, somebody that's not not where you're at or not aligned with you is probably the best way to say it. Right. They're, they're not going to be able to break in whereas in yeah. the past that's what led you down the road that led you to yeah. hopefully if you used your head this yeah. is the opportunity standing in front of you right now you know yeah it's called being equally yoked i mean i'm bringing we're both bringing <laughs> both of those same things in there together and when you know your value you won't settle for less and if somebody right. is not willing to offer you that then it's not a deal we don't have a we don't have a, a binding deal here because i see that you're not willing to to at least bring to the table or push the same amount of chips into the middle of the table as I am. So you're not willing to settle. But again, that that comes from the, the self value, the self worth that that you have to develop in yourself by doing the work, which is changing the narrative of who you are and, and what you are. And so for any singles that are out there that are bummed because they're single, you know, one thing, the, everything that you guys just said right now made me think that's the beauty of being this age, right? As 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 much more baggage as people bring to a relationship at this age because time obviously allows for more of that um it's like you don't you're not under the biological clock like for women anymore it's like i have four amazing children i have you know two ex-husbands that both contributed to that it's like i'm i'm good it's like mm -hmm. i'm in a place where it would have to take somebody super exceptional to make me not want to be single Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it takes getting to the stage in life is a huge hurdle mm -hmm. when you get there and you can look at it that it's like, I have no pressure to have kids. I already mm -hmm. have them. So marriage doesn't necessarily become as, as important as it once was. And mm -hmm. um, so, so to those that are single, Hey, there are some definite good parts of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to find a 40 year old car with no miles. Right. So, <laughs> so when you're meeting people at a certain age, we're going to have some stories. We're going to have some, you know, some, some, some miles on us, if you will. And so when you can at least have good maintenance on that vehicle, <laughs> you know, and, and you can at least present on a lot, like, a you know, analogy. It, it totally <laughs> is, you know, but when, you know, when you can, you know, when you can show up at least the best version that you can be, you know, at your point, then, then yeah, then you have somebody offering it again, you invested in yourself. And so you're not willing to settle for less than what somebody else is willing to invest to be with you. And that's actually the, the great analogy. I mean, check to see if people work on themselves. I mean, you've gone this far. You've had this much experience. You're working on yourself because you're single. So that's what where your focus is. Check to see if they're doing the same thing. I mean, they may have a nice butt, but if they're not working on themselves, it's going to be a, a house fire. So don't, yeah. don't do that. So we well, definitely need to. History repeats itself, right? Mm -hmm. You just will go from that. The next one, mm -hmm. one in the same way. The next one is just. 
Yeah, it does until you change the story or you become more aware and create boundaries and, and create that self-love. But since we need to bring this plane in for a landing, we definitely want to you know, thank Dominique for coming on with this last minute and being such a brave and amazing soul, not knowing what she's getting into. Dominique, if, if you had any parting words for the folks, I mean, what, what would you like to impart before we sign off? You know, what I would say is the grass is not always greener, you know, and I can say that as somebody standing on the outside twice, even though I wanted both of my divorces, but for, you know, for, for certain reasons, but it's just um, like we were, we were put on this earth to le learn and to grow and what happens to us, you know, I believe like was kind of predestined almost. It's like, you know, we're here to, to learn more about ourselves. You know, I think there's some karma involved, not to sound too off the wall, because I'm not. Um, I'm a little bit of everything, I guess you could say, but, uh, you know, it's like, find your purpose, find the gifts in the dust and, um, no one will ever love you the way that you can potentially love yourself. You know, uh, at the end of the day, we are all we have, right. We are all, we truly, truly, especially today, sadly have to rely on. So that has to be your number one. And that's coming from a mother of four kids, you know, mm -hmm. without, with uh, putting the oxygen mask on them first for so many years. Yeah. Mm. Right on. So if, if one of our audience members happens to be in need of your services, if they need that me mediator in, in, in divorce, or maybe to talk to you prior to crossing that threshold, how, how would somebody get hold of you? Um, yeah, no, thank you for that. And I'm not a mediator, just to be clear, I'm a divorce <laughs> coach and a recovery coach, but, um, uh, that tends to come up naturally in the job. So um, my cell phone number, and I want to give that first because my website's being revamped and I'm not sure if it's live right now. Uh, my cell phone is 303-669-8077. And I am on Facebook. I've got a couple different uh, pages on Facebook, but you can find me on Swipe Right Dating in Colorado. And it's swipe R I G H T. Right on. Very cool. And he just put your number in the in the comments down there for anybody that uh, that that might wanna that might wanna check you. I appreciate that there, JBK. Absolutely. Um, so JBK, what kind of uh, parting thoughts do you have about uh, about the, the the our narratives, our stories, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that folks can take away with with, uh, with them tonight? Well, what's been coming up for me, and um, so it's no no uh, accident that this all happened the way it did tonight, honoring your own story, accepting your own story, loving your own story, because that story that those scars, those wounds, those lessons, that experience is going to lead you to being more of yourself and loving yourself. So don't be afraid to look in the mirror. Don't be afraid to to get deep and look at all those things and, and understand those stories because they're there for a reason. Those were your survival mechanisms as a child. They may not serve you anymore as an adult. However, understanding those and, and, and looking at them more as part of who you really are and loving them is going to help you become more of that healthy person that's going to attract that person that is more on your level, is more in alignment with you. Mm. What about you, big man? I know you've got some wisdom and knowledge to drop on these folks. <laughs> man, I think one of the first things I learned in computer programming is garbage in, garbage out. And uh, and, and same, greatness in, greatness out um, is where I, what I say. And, you know, tell yourself all the things you want to hear in terms of love and the story and your narrative and just who you are and, and what you are and, and uh, begin to begin to love yourself. Um, with with a healthy balanced love where you can see yourself but at the same time still love yourself i think that's that's a beautiful place to start and and i think when you start that way you know naturally um you know naturally over the course of time life will just kind of give that back to you in some kind of way and if nothing else you'll find if nothing else you'll find yourself with a great circle of people around you or swimming in great schools of fish um and so i think uh you know, I think I think in terms of the, the stories that we tell ourselves, you know, when we when we keep experiencing the same thing over and over again, probably because we keep bringing the same thing into it over and over again. So we'll change that. And I think we'll change our, our outcome. So. Uh, nice. So, yeah, this is this is good stuff. This is definitely uh, this is definitely not an accident. How can people get a hold of you, JBK? Oh, man, I'm easy. You know, you look right down here. J JasonBKendrick.com. My number is 970-333. 4616. 
look me up on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. You can, you can find me on most of most uh, social media platforms. And if you are struggling with communication, intimacy in your relationships, or even in your, just your personal life, reach out because I know we can find something that will work to help you up level and get better. And my man right here, Kirk M. Samuels, is a master when it comes to working with people. So, I, Kirk, how can people get all of you? Hey, man, I'm the same like you, man. You put my name down there, too, KirkMSamuels.com. Easy way to get a hold of me. I'm the intimacy incubator. I love it, man. I, I love, you know, start creating that self-love, creating a, a, a sense of being about yourself that, that you can love yourself and you can love, you know, again, who you see in the mirror and then what you see around you will begin to manifest in those kind of good ways. So, uh, and of course, you know, I'm all over the place too, but we are here on mad men of masculinity. We, man, we just get on here go back and hit like subscribe, share, put some comments. We can see comments even after this thing airs live. So, uh, put some comments in here, then keep an eye out, you know, for, for when we, uh, we put it on blast next time. Cause yeah, if you got questions, if you got an issue, you got something you want us to cover or something that's just eating at you. That you're like, I need some, Mad Men personality, Mad Men uh, introspection, let us know. And as you can see, when you're in a tribe, you just make a comment next thing you know, you, you better make you, sure you're in you the got, game. You, you better make sure, you know, you got at least some clothes on because you could be live with us okay. immediately, as you can yeah. see tonight. Yeah, right. You know, you got to be ready. The Mad Men of Masculinity don't mess around. You got to be ready. You're in the tribe, then you know we all got a voice, and we want to hear yours. So, uh, so that's and, good. And, and to that point, thank you so much, Dominique, for, for being so brave, much. for jumping hey, in. I know you didn't play. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, I know you didn't know what you're getting into. I know you didn't know what that link was that you were coming on live. But I had no clue I was going to be live looking like this with the Grubhub driver who's still not here. I ordered sushi, and I'm like, what the heck? It takes so he'll, long. he'll show up right after you get off because you no, know, it's the universal timing. <laughs> he's, he's it all probably, works out the way. He's probably somewhere watching us right now. Right, he's sitting oh, outside yeah. the door oh, listening, sure. so he's probably watching us. <laughs> and so he, he he's uh, he'll, he'll be there shortly when we get off of, when we get off of of, of, uh, of our stream here. So. Yeah. Thank you so much, Janine. Thank you so much, Dominique. Thank you, Thank you so much, as always, Brother Kirk. All Love right. you, man. See you. We'll see you folks yeah. later. Keep, right. keep sharing, liking, and loving. Peace.